Christmas Eve and we get to come together and to worship the King of Kings. As, as we start, uh, I just have a few announcements to get them out of the way so we can just concentrate on, on worshiping today. First, I want to remind everybody that next Sunday is New Year's Eve. We will have regular service next Sunday. But New Year's Eve night at 6.30, we're going to be meeting at the Berry Hills house to celebrate the coming of the new year. So if you would like to come, all we want you to do is to sign up in the back so we know how much food to prepare. Uh, there's going to be a bonfire. There's going to be fireworks. There's going to be fellowship. We just need to know how many people are going to come so we can prepare for that. Uh, so there'll be a sign up in the back, and you can do just that. Uh, there will be no Wednesday night service this week. Again, there will be no midweek service. We are taking this Wednesday off so you can celebrate with your family. Some of them will be traveling. Um, and so we just want to take this time to recoup and just to enjoy our family while we have them. And lastly, there was something else I was going to say, but I have for totally forgotten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up in prayer. And whenever it hits my brain again, uh, I, will, I will share it with you. But uh, we just want to uh, open up in prayer service is going to be different today but it's all the same we're going to worship the king of kings as you're coming in uh, you should have received a communion cup uh, if you did not all you have to do is raise your hands uh, if you want to partake of communion uh, if you don't want to partake of communion you don't have to but it is available for you and we will be doing that a little bit later in the service so if you would if you if you can if you would stand as we go to the lord in prayer and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're just going to go right into some worship. Heavenly Father, we love you so very much. We thank you for the gift you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that we could come here today on the eve of his birth as we celebrate it, and to worship you and to worship what you have given us. Father, I pray that you would arrest our minds today for just the next few moments that we're here. Arrest our hearts that we can give everything that we have to you, God. And we're going to believe, Father, that you're going to move in our midst. God, we love you. God, we thank you. We honor you, God. And we just ask that you touch us in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen and amen. Can you feel it in the air? Joy is everywhere. It's Christmas. is shining bright what a glorious night it's christmas the greatest time of the year it's the greatest time of the year come on Tonight it's Jesus, the greatest gift of all, he came to save us all, he's Jesus, it's Christmas, it's the greatest time of the year, it's the greatest time of the year.
the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. tries to hide, it trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great.
is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Worship him this morning for his goodness and for his greatness. You know, this is the best time of the year that we have to be able to witness, to share the love of Jesus. And we should not forget the reason we celebrate it. So it's a great moment and a great opportunity to just pour your love out on him for just the next few seconds, the next 30 seconds. Can you just lift your voices and just worship him? God, we worship you and we give you praise, God, for you alone are worthy. Thank you, Jesus, for your good. You are so good. You may be seated. Today is a very special day. It's a wonderful day. Today I know is a very busy day for a lot of individuals. I know we have plans afterwards. We have family endeavors. We have all kind of things going on. And we're going to honor your time. But I feel today is a day that we get so excited about the birth of Christ that we're going to celebrate him. And and I have a, a, a short word that I want to share with you today. And I want to start with a story that really ties in to everything that's going on. Near the end of World War II, behind the enemy lines of the Nazi Germany, there were prison camps that were housing some of the American troops and some other troops from the Allies, and in one camp, there was a time to where they were not fed all that well. They were beginning to starve. 
they were thin, they were discouraged, wondering if they would ever get to go home again and see another Christmas. The Nazi guards watched them behind the fences and with a downcast face, they looked at their shoulders that were slumped over and they were scarcely even speaking to each other. These prisoners have lost all hope of life. They, they were in a own, their own little world in the same prison camp. And yet there was nowhere they could look, nowhere they could go. It said, but suddenly one morning, everything seemed to have changed. They were still behind the fences. They were still in the, the camps. They were still being uh, misfed. They were being mistreated. They were still extremely sick. But the guards noticed that they were happy. They were smiling. They were talking to each other. They were gathering in little huddles. And every now and then you could hear a little hoot from somewhere within the prison camp. The guards had no idea what was going on. Still misfed, mistreated, sick, wondering if they was going to get out. But now they... They begin to have a little life, and we didn't understand why. I said there was a little transistor radio that had been smuggled in, and the American POWs heard the news that the Allied forces had landed. They had triumphed, and they were moving steadfastly inland, and it could be just a few days before their rescue because liberation was happening. You see, from this very small story, we can see the power of news. Nothing had changed except the news that they heard. The news had awakened hope inside the prisoners. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of the prison camps, and you say, well, Pastor, what's this have to do with Christmas Eve? We'll, we'll get there. It's not a pretty picture, and there's no way we can look at that and see how happiness and joy and could come from it. But, but they begin to hear that somebody was coming for them. That same message was heard many, many, many years before. And it starts off, says, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be to all the people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Today, very much like those prisoners back in World War II, we find ourselves stuck in a place that we do not want to be. But we have no way out if we look within ourselves. We are trapped and hope is disappearing the more and more we try on our own. But the good news has broken in. And it changes everything. In fact, the news that the Allied troops heard that night was nothing compared to the news of Christ's entrance into this world that the shepherds heard that glorious night. It would not be heard by just the shepherds, but it would be heard by the greatest news and it would be heard and shared over and over in every language by all people. News changes everything. It changes our perception. It changes our understanding. And the longer we're on this earth, the more we discover about the greatness of God. The more we learn about the complexity of the human body, the more we are at awe of what happens. The more that we can understand how this body works, the more in awe of God we are because we understand He is the one that formed every bit of it. The more news we hear about the vastness of space and the universe, our minds cannot comprehend what science tells us. The pictures we see are mind-blowing. They're beautiful. They, they leave us speechless. Yet, with all of this news and all of this information, the greatest news was heard that night in the field outside of a small town among men not welcomed in that town. 
the greatest news, even though the complexity of life was screaming out and the pales in comparison to this good news, even after learning about the enormous size and content of the entire universe. Do you know that they estimate that there's anywhere between 100 and 200 billion galaxies within the universe? Now, I don't know how they come up with this estimation, but if you look at this last picture, there's over 50 galaxies in that last picture. And it, and it begins to have my mind wonder. We don't see all these galaxies, but yet the same God that created the complexity of our bodies created the complexity of the universe that we live in and the galaxies that we just now are coming to know. It's the greatness of our God. The beauty of nature that we see every day when you begin to think about all the places that God has created. You begin to see all the fingerprints that he has placed in everything that we see and everything that we know. God chose to introduce his son in this way. In a dark, tucked away stable, lying in a manger. Even in the greatness of the city that he formed, that was the city of David, there was absolutely no house suitable to hold him that night. There was no mansion available for him to lay in. There was no family room open for him to be able to take his first breath. There was no room in the inn. God brought his son to us and he used what others would overlook and even look down upon. You see, in a small town, it wasn't a room. It wasn't a bed. It wasn't even a cradle. God used a manger to hold his son that first night. A common feeding trough. To hold the bread of life. A dark stable to house the light of the world. He changed the purpose of that manger. And he'd been doing the same thing ever since. Floating around the sanctuary, there are a couple small mangers. And if you could just imagine what this manger saw before Jesus was born. You could imagine what... Mouths went inside of this to grab the, the feed that was placed inside. A manger. The purpose of this manger was forever changed because of what God wanted to do that night. The purpose of this manger was forever changed in our eyes. And, and we can never look at a manger the same way. Most of us that hold Jesus Dear to our hearts, every time we see a manger, our minds go to that night that he took his first breath. Even if you have one on your property and you're feeding animals, it's still my Savior could have been laying in this manger. He changed the purpose. And that night, after he changed the purpose of that manger, he had been doing the same thing ever since, changing the purpose of every person to ever take breath on this earth. You see, he did not need status. He did not seek prestige. He did not demand fanfare when he came into this earth. All he needed was a vessel open to hold him. All he needed was a vessel open. Maybe you have heard that you're broken, that you're no good. Maybe someone has said that you're not important or worth the time. Maybe you think there is no hope. But there is news that was announced that night that is still true today. And the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will, bring, that will be for all the people. For unto us this day in the city of David, a Savior who was Christ Jesus. 
And this will be a sign to you. will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. God could have put him anywhere in this earth, anywhere in this universe, anywhere in his creation. But yet he chose the city of David and he chose to announce the birth and the arrival of his son to outcast on the outside of town that nobody wanted to hang around with, that was not welcomed into town. Jesus was lying in the manger, and God was making a statement that night. Philippians chapter 2 says, Though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. Jesus could have parted in eternity time. He could have walked on this earth the very first time as a grown man with his royal robe on, with his crown on and his scepter, and begin to rule the way he will rule. But he chose to come the way his father wanted him to come. As a servant, being born in the night with no fanfare, no room, lying in a manger. He kept that same status his whole life. Isaiah 53 tells us, My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in a dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Nothing to attract us to him. I wonder how many times people walk by that stable that night not knowing what was lying in that manger. I wonder how many people walk by that stable that day not even thinking about what was going on, trying to get their affairs in order. But an angel came to some men that were outcast. And said, I have some news for you, and it's good. It's going to bring great joy to all people. And this is where you're going to find him. It's the news that will touch the richest man, and it will hold the lowest of men. It comforts the broken and the hurting, and it accepts the unacceptable. It is the good news that changes everything. The great news, there is hope for tomorrow. And your tomorrow can start today. You see... There is a connection that we have to have and we have to understand. And before me, you see a cross and you see a manger. And apart from each other, they mean absolutely nothing. But together, it tells the story of what God had in store for his people. You see, without the cross and what the cross was going to accomplish, the manger means nothing. And without the manger... For the Savior to come in the way that he came, the cross could have never happened. They are connected together and you cannot separate them. What you see before you in the manger and the cross, you see the salvation that is available to every man and every woman that will open their mouths and open their hearts. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ to come into their lives. You see, Christmas is a glorious time. As a child, it's magical. We have all kind of exciting things going on. But there's nothing more magical. There is nothing more transformative than a heart that accepts Jesus Christ. And what better time to accept Jesus Christ than the eve of his birth that we celebrate. The manger prepared the way. For the cross. And the cross prepared the way for you to have eternal life. Without them, there is no hope. Without them, we're like the troops in World War II before the radio had been smuggled in. It's before they heard the good news. It's before they understood that rescue was coming. It was before they understood that they was going to be getting out. But the news 
was shared that glorious night. And as the news was shared that glorious night, we all have hope today. And I wonder if if we begin to prepare for the next part of our service, which is we're going to take communion together. If you choose to take communion. The Bible tells us that we have to have the right heart to take communion, that we should not take it if our heart is not ready and if our heart is not prepared. But this is the time that you can be prepared for that. This is the time that you can ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to forgive you of your sins, to wash you clean, and to change your life forever. If every one would, would you please bow your heads for just a moment and close your eyes. And saints, if you would pray for just a moment. I believe that every time we enter into a church service, there is somebody in needing of God's salvation. I believe somebody is living a life that is not led by Scripture and they need God to change their heart and their mind. What better gift we could give than to have every angel in heaven celebrating another soul coming to the Father. And I wonder if you have that courage to say, Pastor, I'm not saved today. Oh, I've said the prayer, I said this, I said that, but um, I'm not living a life. And, and I wonder if you would say, Pastor, I want to make that decision today. I want to make this the best Christmas I could ever make it. And I want to give my heart and my life to Jesus Christ for what he has given to me. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, I wonder if somebody would say, Pastor, that's me. If that is you, could you just slip your hand up for just a moment? You don't have to leave it up long. You don't have to leave it up high. But just slip it up and say, Pastor, that's me today. I'm not living the life that I need to live. And I need God to change me. I need God to wash me clean of the sins that I have committed in my life. And I wonder if everybody would say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I'm sorry. I believe that you came to earth. You died for my sins. You went to the grave. And on the third day you rose. And because of that, I have victory over my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Savior of the world. And I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I believe that you are the Lord Jesus. And I thank you for saving my life today. Help me to make decisions today and every day after to please you. And to follow what you tell me to do. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, you might not have raised your hand, but you might have said that prayer. And you might have said it wholeheartedly. And if you did do that, today your life is totally changed. Today, you are a new creation. Jesus Christ has now repurposed you. And now he can be... You can be used for his glory and for his might. Now you are the manger walking around in a world that needs to see the light and needs to understand there is life after mistakes. There is life after sin. And maybe you need to be the manger to those that are walking around and as you walk into that area, you bring Jesus with you. You bring that liberation with you. You bring that joy with you. And to celebrate and to remember what he has done, I decided that I wanted the church together to take communion. So if you would, please get your sacraments together. And I know it's kind of dim in here, but if you need a communion cup, all you have to do is lift your hands. We have people in the back that will bring them to you. If you need them, we have some over here on the left side of me. We have some on the right side. We'll wait just a moment and they'll bring them to you.
And as they are beginning to bring them to you, I want you to begin to prepare your heart. Begin to prepare your mind. Understand that this is just not something that we do. Communion is very sacred to me, and because it's so sacred to me, I tend to not do it a lot during the year because I don't want it to become common. I don't want it to become something that we just do in service. With everybody having your sacraments, if you would begin to separate it and begin to pull the wafer apart. Paul begins to administer communion to the Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we begin to see what he begins to teach them. And we're going to use the scripture today. And starting in verse 23, it says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and Gave thanks to God for it. He then broke it into pieces and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I wonder if you would break the wafer and if you would take the wafer now. Shortly after that, as they were sitting at the same table, Jesus took a cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and His people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink. If you would, drink the juice. Every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you have done in our lives, God. Father, as we have taken communion today, Father, I pray that it's special today. Not just because it's Christmas Eve, Lord God, but because maybe... It was taken today by an individual that really begins to understand the meaning of what it is to take communion. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch us today as we continue on with the service, as we continue on with worship. And I pray, Father, that you would meet us here today. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong. Shine through the shine. 
Turn the lights up, please. I want to sing this just one more time. And what I want you to do is you sing this song with the worship team. We're speaking Jesus over our families. We're speaking Jesus over our lives. We're speaking Jesus over the mistakes that we have made. We're speaking Jesus over our future. There is no better time to speak Jesus than the eve of his birth. You know, my mind begins to go into my imagination, and I wonder what heaven was like that eve. As he was preparing to send the Son of the living God from heaven to earth. I wonder how many angels' wings were just ruffling each other because they didn't know what to do. Because they knew there was about to be a part of a heavenly choir that was going to be over a field late during the night. Presenting themselves to some shepherds that was going to be scared out of their minds. And there was going to be singing, holy, 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 the sun has come. I wonder if you could be undignified for just a moment. If you could appease me for just a moment. And if you could speak Jesus over your life today. If you could speak Jesus over your family today. There are hurts that we're going through. There's pain that we're going through. There's healing that we need. In all aspect of life, physical, spiritual, emotional, relational, financial, whatever it might be. And there is a name that has been given that is above every other name. There is a name that when you begin to speak it, everything in creation begins to listen. you to begin at verse 4, Jaden. And I wonder if as we begin to sing this, and this is the last thing we're going to do, and I'm going to dismiss you. There was going to be some offering buckets at the back door, and as you leave, you can put your Christmas offering in there, your tithes, whatever, back there as you leave. But before you leave, I wonder if you could reach and touch the hem of his garment for just a moment. If you can begin to speak his name over your life and allow the healing virtue that only comes from him to begin to change how you see your life right now. I wonder if you could do just that as they begin to sing, starting at verse 4. I wonder, the, the words are going to be behind me. I wonder if you would sing with them. Let it be a choir that will bring comfort to the shepherds. Jesus in the street Jesus in 
the street. Jesus said the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name begin to tear open these gifts I pray that you speak Jesus I pray that you allow that healing virtue that comes in his name and comes by his blood to change your gathering today and tomorrow having your family gatherings and your friends come over that you have the courage and the boldness to stop for a moment invite him in share the story share the reason why you've come together today share the reason why you wake up in the morning and get together let him be the center celebration this year. Shout it from the mountains. Shout it in the streets. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. If you don't hear this anymore today, I want everybody that can, I want you to look at me. I love and every one of you. Not just me, but the Father that has given me this tremendous privilege of being a pastor at this church loves you more than the words can ever describe or express. When you feel like there's no one, when you feel like you're left out, understand that He loves you. Purposed manger. The, the evidence of his love for you. There was a bloody heel that he bore so you didn't have to. Evidence that he loves you. This Christmas you might not get the gift that you want. Christmas you might not get any gifts maybe it's been a bad year and you just can't buy gifts for each other maybe you're not in the mood but I pray that you receive his gift today it's going to be a, an ugly day weather wise which means it's great to get somewhere hunker down and just spend some time with family and friends still might be a little too warm for a fireplace but that's your pleasure get that fireplace going spend time with your family let them know how much you love them and care for them as you
you leave today, remember the offering buckets are in the back. All you need to drop that in. I pray that you have a wonderful Christmas. I pray that healing comes in your life. And I pray you experience his love like never before. We love you. Merry Christmas. You're dismissed.